In this lesson, we are going to do something that we actually did in grade 10, which is converting the equation of a quadratic function from standard form into vertex form. Now, there are quite a few ways to do this. Uh, in grade 10, I personally covered two of these three ways. Uh, so hopefully by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to choose what's best for you. Uh, so let's see, before we do that, uh, what does the vertex form provide us that the standard form doesn't? And obviously, it's the vertex. So if you remember from our discussions uh, about quadratics in grade 10, you would remember that like standard form wasn't very good. Like standard form gives you the y-intercept and basically nothing else. Uh, but the factor form gives us the zeros, the vertex form gives us the vertex. Uh, so if you had a word problem that involved uh, the maximum value and the minimum value of the function, then you would probably want to change it to vertex form or at least find the vertex, okay? All right, so the different ways, uh, let's see, we're gonna complete the square. That's the classic way, probably the first way you learn how to uh, go from standard form to vertex form. Uh, the new way is called partial factoring. And then we're going to uh, have this shortcut uh, because the x coordinate on the y coordinate of the vertex, um, they're basically, you can find them if you know a, b, and c when uh, when the equation is written in standard form, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. But we'll get to that at the uh, at the when, when we get there. I don't want to spoil that because I would argue that is a very efficient way of going about to find the vertex. So how do you find uh, how do you complete the square? So just in case you forgot, you probably did forget if you haven't done it in a while. So you factor a from the first two terms. And then you need to complete, or you need, yeah, complete the square. You want to create a perfect square trinomial. So you add by uh, b over 2a all squared. But if you just add by p over 2a all squared, then you've changed the quadratic function. So what you want to do is add by it, but also subtract by it. But since you only really want the perfect square trinomial, uh, we're going to take this fourth term out of the brackets, but uh, then you need to multiply by a. And then you uh, factor this and simplify, so you'll have the equation in vertex form, okay? So let's deal with some numbers. So let's take this and convert it into a vertex form by completing the square. So I'm going to factor, the first, uh, factor a from the first two terms. And then I'm going to create a perfect square trinomial. trinomial. So divide by 2 in squared. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. You're going to square 1. So if I add by 1 squared, I also want to subtract by 1 squared. And I know 1 squared is 1, but I don't, I don't want to write down 1, one because I want, I want you to see the perfect square trinomial. a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, so, um, which is a plus b all squared. So minus 1 times 2, which is minus 2. Very common mistake. Students usually forget to multiply by the a value. Um, but yeah, please do that. All right, so factor the perfect square trinomial. Boom. Negative 10. So, or oh, sorry, two, negative 2 minus 8 is negative 10. Um, all right, there you go. It's in vertex form. Okay. All right, so the vertex here is negative one, negative 10. It's opening up. Um, you can also say it's a vertical stretch by a factor of two compared to y equals x squared. So let's see example two here. Complete the square again, all right, no problem. So one more time. So this one I would argue is a little, no, not that much harder, but you just have to play with uh, numbers that you may be less comfortable with. So some fractions. So factor out 3 from the first two terms, okay, and then add and add by, oops, all 
we're going to add by 5 over 6 squared because 5 over 3 over, divided by 2 is 5 6. So you can add by 5 over 6 all squared, but then also subtract by that value. So nothing is really changed. So I really just want to see my perfect square trinomial. So 5 uh, over 6 all squared is 25 over 36, and then multiply that by 3. So that actually simplifies really nicely because 3 and 36 will divide. 3 and 36 has a common factor of 3. So this is going to end up being negative 25 over 12. So you know common denominator, so 120 over 12. Okay, and then you're almost done. So that's 95 over 12. Let's uh, just make sure we're all good here. Yep, looks good, looks good. So it's in vertex form. So with the vertex is 5 over 6, 95 over 12. So that's our first of three ways, okay? You, um, you complete the square. You just have to basically remember the steps. There's not much to it. Okay, so the next way is called partial factoring. So the way partial factoring works is that if you really study the process of completing the square, you'll notice that you don't really rely on the, the third term when it comes to finding out the x coordinate of the vertex. The, the constant term of the, of the equation doesn't really change the x coordinate vertex. So I try to graph, uh, how many see, one, two, I graph four different uh, quadratic functions um, where the first two terms are identical. And you notice that they all share uh, the same axis of symmetry. So later on, when we talk about transformations, we can we can we can show that okay. If the first two terms are the same, it makes perfect sense that the that, that they share the same axis symmetry. Now, if if you don't want to approach it this way, you can go back to our first page, and you'll notice that as long as the first two terms of the quadratic relations are uh, quadratic relation or uh, sorry, if the first two terms of the equations for the quadratic functions are the same, then you notice that you always end up with the same x coordinate of the vertex, which means they share the same axis of symmetry. So using that fact, what we're going to do is develop the method of partial factoring. Okay, so uh, let g of x, I'm gonna create this function g of x and g of x has the exact same first two terms as f of x because i know that if g of x and f of x share the uh, the first two terms if they're exactly the same they have the same axis symmetry okay so i just need to find the axis symmetry for g of x now and that will give me the axis symmetry for um for f of x so how do i find the axis symmetry here how do I find the x coordinate of the vertex? Well, I can get the zeros really easily because there's no constant term here. So I'm gonna factor. Beautiful. So the zeros here for g of x are zero and four. Now be careful. These are zeros of g of x. They have nothing to do with f of x. These are not the zeros of f of x. Okay, so I'm going to average the zeros, and I get 2. Now remember, the, the, uh, the two functions, f of x and g of x, they share the exact same x-coordinate of the vertex, okay? Because they have the exact same axis symmetry. So I basically create a function to get some information about f of x, and now I'm done. I'm done with g of x. Bye-bye. Okay, it's useless to me. I, I got it for what I, I, I extracted the information I needed from g of x, and now I'm ready to move on. I throw it away, and I take this value of, uh, of 2, and I will find 
uh, the y coordinate of the vertex, f of 2. So remember, f of x is the one I really want to work with. Okay. Let me just check here. Something seems off here. Oh yeah, I knew this when I saw the the math here. I I knew something went wrong because the first two terms simplify to zero. So this. Okay. So the zeros are zero and two. All right, so the x coordinate of vertex is actually 1 and not 2. So I'm going to find f of 1, not f of 2, to get the y coordinate of the vertex. Okay, so let me just fix that one more time. Start from the beginning. So I copy the first two terms of f of x and create the function g of x. Now why would I do that? Because f of x and g of x, because those first two terms are the same, they share the same axis symmetry, which means they also share the same x coordinate of the vertex. So I gather the zeros, which is very easy because there's no constant term. All you have to do is common factor. Once you have the zeros, average them because of the, the, the property of symmetry in a quadratic function. Um, and then you have your x coordinate vertex, you throw away g of x, and now you're back to working with f of x. So f of one. So where was I? Now this looks much better. Negative 2 plus 9, which is 7. Okay, so the vertex is 1, 7, which means, therefore, uh, vertex form. So I'm going to just write f of x. I'm going to copy the a value, which is 2. Vertex is 1, 7. There we go. Okay, so don't make a silly mistake like I did. But you know what? You'll catch it if you... If you follow through and, and you'll notice that there's, there's, it just doesn't make any sense. Okay, if you do enough questions, I don't want to spoil the secret, but by, by subbing in the x value of the vertex, you can see like you made a mistake. Okay, uh, you can play around with the numbers. I, I don't want to give away the secret. Okay, so where was I? Uh, yeah, so that's the method of partial factoring. So we did completing the square and we did partial factoring. So I don't know which way you like better. Uh, but those are two ways for you right now. All right, so I personally think the third way is the best. Okay, so if you remember from what I said in grade nine, or sorry, grade 10, uh, you know that the x coordinate of the vertex uh, is always negative b over 2a. Okay, and you saw it from the first page too. If I can show you, I'll bring it back. The x coordinate of the vertex is always negative b over 2a. In fact, you could also say the y coordinate of the vertex is always negative negative b squared over 4a plus c. But that, that to me is a little too much to memorize. I mean, you could do that, but um, I choose not to. Okay. All right. So let's convert this into the vertex form. No problem. So you could do complete and square. You could do partial factoring, but I'm going to show you the last way. In fact, I'm tempted to do all three ways and, and let you choose which one, but I'm just going to do the negative b over 2a, and maybe you can complete the square and partial factor. So negative b over 2a. Well, in this case, that's going to be negative 5 over 2 times, which is 5 quarters. Okay, so f of 5 quarters. See how fast that was? Like this, this way to me is like a sure, like a, like a big winner, okay? Because if you chose the partial factor, you would have to create a new function. You would have to find the zeros of that function and you have to average the zeros. Whereas here, just bam, 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 negative b over 2a. Okay, so it's up to you though. Like different students have different preferences, but to me, it's like a, a very clear winner. All right, so anyways, f of five quarters. All right, let's check. So I show, so. So 169 over eight. 
All right, so I got the vertex, and you can th write it in vertex form. Um, yeah, so uh, you chose to complete the square or partial factor, you'll get the exact same answer. So there are three different ways of converting from uh, standard form to vertex form.